Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome back to our home renovation remodel series thing and welcome to my shop. This is the first time this series I have been able to say that and I am uh, pretty excited to be back here in the shop. Finally, we are getting started on some cabinets today. So there's a lot going on with the kitchen and the cabinetry and everything with this project and as we progress through the build, we'll, uh, we'll fill in a lot of the details. But today I thought I'd just give you a quick overview and then we're gonna get started into the uh, stock prep for the face frames. I made this little model to better illustrate the overall layout of the kitchen really easily and quickly. And we have a few different components as we work through this. We have the main sort of L, which has the sink and the range. We have the island. And then over here on this wall, we have this dishes cabinet, which is flanked by the two uh, doorways here. So because this is a fully custom kitchen, there isn't a whole lot of like fill strips or areas where I can hide error. So I'm gonna be focusing on doing face frames first. You can do cabinets however you want. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Boxes first, face frames first, uh, doors and drawers first. Do whatever you want. I'm doing face frames because that way I can take them into the space, verify that the whole cabinet is gonna fit once it's assembled, and then I can go ahead and start building the boxes onto the actual face frames. So today I'm just gonna get started by prepping stock and I'm gonna start making the face frames for the base units that wrap around the outside. What I would like to attempt to do is to get all the base cabinetry installed and in place. Uh, that way the uh, countertop folks can come in and start doing the fabrication on the stone and actually maybe get that stuff installed while I'm working on the, the upper cabinets just to keep things rolling and speed things along. And that also keep it just a little more like emotionally manageable for me because there is a lot going on here and I'm gonna do it in kind of smaller bites than someone who has cabinetry experience because uh, I don't and uh, I wanna take it slow and easy. So opening things up a bit here to look at the stock we're gonna need. There are basically three pieces of stock we need. We need a two inch strips. So that is gonna be all of the styles of all the cabinets, the outer sides of all the cabinets. We need the little piece that goes under the countertop above the top drawer or door, whatever's on top. That is an inch and three quarter. And then all of the little pieces in between everything else, they're all one inch. So we need those three pieces of stock. A couple episodes ago, you saw us make all the trim for the great room. We have a whole lot of rips and things left over from that. So this is gonna become some of the stock. None of this is wide enough for the inch and three quarter and the two inch. So this is all gonna be my one inch stock. And I have basically a whole bunk of uh, maple here that I'm gonna use for all my other pieces. This is gonna be whatever facer material I need and also be my drawer fronts and my door parts and everything else will come out of this maple. So I grabbed a few boards and that's what I'm gonna work on processing uh, right now is cutting those boards up, making them more manageable and taking them down to basically S4S at the width that I need. So I have all these blank pieces that I can then start cutting into final length and working on assembling all of my face frames.
there's the stock. We got inch and three quarter, two inch and one inch. And uh, I'm gonna start making some face frames, I guess. And as I look at the, the kind of plans and layout, you know, there's not a whole lot of parts that are like the same length. I can like batch chop a whole bunch of them to the same size, but there is one component that most all the cabinets share that can do at once. And that's gonna be the side styles of the cabinets, basically the feet or the legs, because those ones go all the way down to the floor, which is gonna lead me to sort of an interesting other problem that I'm gonna solve. And uh, that is this, you know, connection with the floor. Ideally, these would come down and touch the floor perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is leave the side styles long. I'll make them a half inch longer than they need to be. And that'll give me a half inch scribe. So when I go to install them, I can scribe them to the floor and that'll take care of any unevenness there might be in that floor that I installed. So any of the cabinets that are counter height are gonna have a pair of those on either side. So I can count these up and go ahead and make all of those cuts now. So at least they're all the same and I can pull from one pile of parts. I'm gonna start with this cabinet here. So I need a one inch, a one inch and an inch three quarter to go across here for my rails. So I'm gonna grab those and the, uh, the final width on this thing is 43 and a half wide. My two side pieces are two. So if I take four inches off my dimension, that'll be the final length of these uh, rail things. Boop, boop. And then once I have those cut, I will uh, cut and start filling in the, uh, I guess the drawer divider pieces whatever you want to call them.
it's a cabinet. <laughs> so I just finished up a couple more. I'm feeling a lot better about this now. Now that I have a little bit of experience, I kind of have a good flow for things. So this is the cabinet that's gonna go next to the range, to the right side of the range. This will be a spice pull-out caddy thing. This is our corner unit, so the actual corner unit itself will come back here another two feet. And this will be one of those magic corner things where like the bins come out into the, the room or whatever. So that's that one. I got this wider style here because this piece here, this is the first cabinet on the uh, the west wall, that one butts up into here like that and they'll join something like that. So you have two inch styles showing on each side. This is a uh, bank of drawers and this is the trash pull out thing. <laughs> pull out shelf thing. So those two are done. I'm going to hop over to the other side of the sink. The sink's going to be here. I'll do that one in a little bit. We're going to go to the other side of the sink, which is the dishwasher and another bank of drawers. Basically, this, but this way. <laughs> so we have this kind of different arrangement here with the dishwasher. We want these two to be symmetrical. The dishwasher is 24 inches wide, and that's just going to be an open cavity. So that means that all of these little pieces here are actually going to go onto the dishwasher as its own panel. So the top rail and that cove molding on top of a faux drawer, this faux, this faux um, rail, full panel, full rail, that all goes on to the dishwasher panel. So it leaves me with this style, which is not connected to anything in this unit. So it's gonna go over with the sink base and be attached to it. So that leaves us with just this kind of weird unit over here with one full style and then one partial style to make. So this will be a little bit different, but I'm gonna run through making that real quick. And like I said, laying off my dominoes, and one of the things that I was doing as I was working is I made you know, little template jig things like this. So this is the location of the center point of that top, I guess, rail or second rail or whatever to frame out that first drawer opening. That is technically the same thing on every single one of these parts or every single one of these face frames. They all have a five inch top drawer. So I can use this little block to just quickly set that center line for all these pieces. The other thing is that these need to be all divided up exactly the same. I did that already on this frame here. This is exactly the same drawer layout, same alignment and everything. So I can actually copy my layout from this face frame to the other one just by moving my lines over. I do still have my divider set so I could walk out that spacing again, but I already did the work so I might as well just reuse it and I can pick up all the layout lines from this face frame. And I can get these out of the way for a second and I can transfer these dominoes over to this side. I can use this to space myself down for this guy. And I can just transfer all these lines over.
Next, I want to get the size of the sink base cabinet finalized. So I need to open up the sink and see what's uh, going on with it. Hey. Oh, it's cool. I like it. What do you think? It's serious. Try and pick that up. Good luck. <laughs> so you gotta make it strong to hold it. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know how this needs to be pretty damn strong to support the sink. It's just way more than me. Yeah. 130 pound sink. Plus, when you fill up with water. So one thing that really helps me is doing some mock-ups. So I'm mocking up the buildup of the material around the sink just to get a better idea of what the heck this is going to look like. So I have the styles for the cabinets that come into the side of it. I have the style for the actual sink base itself. And then there's a little rail that goes on top, just like the other cabinets. Above that, Underneath the sink directly is a little piece of stone, a little ledge. And then below that, between the ledge and the top rail, is that uh, cove molding. Now, these sinks aren't completely uniform, so I need to get it out of the box and get some actual measurements on it so I can make sure that I'm making my sink base to the right height so the sink can be at the right height to match up with the countertop. I used a couple of sticks of wood to extend the plane of the top of the sink so I could measure how tall it was at the four corners. This one is around 10 and an eighth inches tall on three of the corners, but then the back left corner is closer to 10 and a 16th. So I'm going to base my cabinet on that dimension and actually drop it down a little bit more so I have some wiggle room to shim the sink up to the bottom of the countertop. And lastly, while I have the sink out like this, I just want to take a look and see what I'm in for as far as the style that's going to meet up with the side of the sink and how that's going to need to be scribed to fit. I set a strip of wood square to the strip that is now parallel to the top of the sink so I can see the draft angle on the sink and the radius at the bottom just to make sure I give myself enough blocking on my styles to then be able to scribe that complete profile onto it. And lastly, I can confirm the sink width, and that ended up right at 30 inches, which is what it's supposed to be. Okay, now that I finally have my dimensions for that sink base, I can start making the actual face frame. And this one is uh, pretty easy because there's only three pieces, two styles and one rail. This cabinet does not have a lower rail on the face frame. The doors will close against the box on the inside, and that lower rail will be omitted. Now one difference with this face frame versus the other ones is I'm making the stock for the face frame an inch and a thick. This cabinet will be set forward of the other two that butt into it. So that extra thickness on the face frame will give me an area where the other two could butt into without having the plywood of the box exposed. Like if I left that face frame at three quarters like all the other ones, I'd have three quarters of the face frame showing and a quarter inch of the plywood box showing as well. So by making it a thicker face frame, I can paint the entire face frame and not have to worry about a little bit of the box that needs to be painted or the seam between the face frame and the plywood needing to be painted or something like that. This just butts right in there and I don't have to worry about uh, any sort of transition or anything like that just to make things a little bit easier. <laughs> And there we go, three pieces, two styles, and one rail, and that is the face frame for the sink base. And now I can take care of making the last face frame that I've been putting off, the face frame for the tall cabinet, because the styles are like 94 inches tall, and uh, it's a long piece of wood to be moving through the shop and processing. This one here is four pieces, two styles and two rails. The door and drawers will be continuous from top to bottom, with no interruption for a rail anywhere in the case. So there is our stack of face frames. 
I'm gonna get these things upstairs and start laying them out in place and seeing if everything is gonna fit right. I'm really glad I did this because it really allows you to see like the full layout and like the full step out of everything. That, uh, that really helps. So a few small things that I have to tweak. So I need 42 inches for my fridge surround. It's got a three inch um, style on either side and a 36 inch opening for the fridge. This is a quarter inch too far this way, but I am also about a quarter inch too far that way off center for my sink to be centered with the window. So on this bank here, I'll pull a quarter inch out of this drawer compartment and that'll shift everything over that quarter inch, give me enough space to make that look good and work and also center my sink up in the middle of that window. On this wall, I had one issue that I knew about this morning when I built this frame for this unit. I had planned my layout for this unit to be a 36 inch. It actually used to be 34, so I have two inches of difference that I can put into this bank of drawers and that'll bring this to my 36 inch opening that I need for uh, the range. This like area up to this point is kind of fixed because it's based off of the center point of the range, which is the pot filler location there. So this needs to be exactly where it needs to go. So the end of this cabinet is exactly 18 inches off the center point right there. So this is good. I've also have planned to leave myself uh, about a quarter inch or so to the left side of this unit. So when I put the steps on here, I will bring them into the side panel of this unit and that'll give me a little bit of a little fudge area there. So <laughs> at this point, I can make those few tweaks to those two cabinets and I can start gluing up my frames.
So there is all of the face frames all painted and ready to go, all except one. You probably noticed that the tall giant one is not here. That one I will handle separately because that cabinet gets side panels on both of them. So I'll probably end up building the whole thing and painting it as a single unit. So at least for now, we'll be working on these ones uh, into the future. The finish turned out really nicely. I feel pretty confident about this going forward. That was one of the biggest um, things that I was worried about on this whole project was doing a painted finish because uh, painted finishes are the most difficult form of finishing you can do. It's very different than what you can get away with with a clear finish like, uh, like I'm used to. So I'm glad this is uh, working out nicely. The surface is really smooth and level and the, the sheen is even and just looks like it looks like a real painted cabinet, <laughs> which, uh, which feels pretty cool. So that's why I'm gonna end this one. I feel a lot better about uh, the work going forward, not only on the paint, but just figuring out all of the intricacies of the kitchen layout and how everything is supposed to come together. And uh, I just, I feel a lot better at this point. So next time we'll get into adding boxes onto the face frame. So this is my stack of plywood, which is going to become a lot of the cabinet boxes and we'll kind of go from there. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the home renovation or model or whatever, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> half wood king. It's, it's plywood, but at least it's wood. <laughs> I'm slowly getting back to woodworking. I'd like to be working with solid wood again. That'd be nice. <laughs>